Brother Sewing and Crafting family, welcome to the party. Well, how's it going? We have a really fun show for you today. Cindy Hogan has got the cutest project you've ever seen. And we are live on Brother Sew's Facebook, YouTube, Crafting and Sewing page. So say hi, say where you're from. You never know, your neighbor might be sewing next to you or crafting or fishing, which is what my husband's doing today. <laughs> so, oh, hey everyone. So I'm gonna bring Cindy up. This is gonna be so much fun. Hey, Cindy, how are you? I'm good, how about yourself? Yeah, so I wasn't kidding. So Wynn's out fishing and I'm like, I went to go get gas in my car and I'm dressed like I'm in a monsoon and the guy pulls up next to me with shorts on. I'm thinking, well, maybe guys are just warmer because- <laughs> Shorts and flip flops, right? <laughs> yeah. So how are you? Nice to see you. I'm great, good to see you. Happy New Year, everybody. I haven't been here in a while. Everybody's saying hello, hello. That, well, I, I feel like you have been here because I watch you every Tuesday, but you haven't really. So welcome back. Happy New Year to everyone. <laughs> so what are we doing today? I'm very excited about this because, go ahead, I won't ruin it. We are making um, stabilizer wraps so that we can actually know what we have in our stash. <laughs> Instead of just having the big old bomb of here's this stabilizer, here's this stabilizer. If you start with knowing what it is, then it does make a difference. And a little tip that I would say is color code them. So if it's a tearaway, pick a color that you're going to use for tearaway. I chose red for my tearaways. For my washaways, I chose blue because blue, you know, water, blue water. And we're making them out of a little clicker bracelet. So if you Google, or excuse me, if, if you do an internet search, sorry, no affiliation to Google. If you do an internet search for clicker bracelets, you'll find them. And it really is a tape measure, but the tape measures that we buy, you can't make them do it. So this actually is, is the route I went. And if you don't want to go that way, you could always just um, make the basic shape and don't put the bracelet in it and put your ties on it if you want to. You know, there's multiple ways you could do it. This is going so, to be so much fun. I'm very excited about this because mm -hmm. I just mentioned that I'm organizing. You know, January is the organizing month, really, kind of. I mean, I should do it more than January if you look at my studio. But I've got a whole stash of stabilizer over here that um, it's kind of just I know what it is. But I think this is going to make it so much faster because do you remember the time that I accidentally grabbed the heat away instead of the wash away? Mm -hmm. Now, that's really not smart, but <laughs> I they felt the same, kind of, really not. But if I was paying attention, I would have noticed. And then when I went to wash it away, it wouldn't wash away. And then I had to heat it away. And then I, let's just say, I still have the top, but it's pretty much of a hot, itchy mess. So this would have saved me a ton of time. Yeah. Um, the other way, if if they don't want to go through the, the issue of embroidering theirs, they can always cut a label out of their scan and cut with adhesive vinyl and slap it on the slap it on the thing. And once again, I would do color coding just so that you know the color of what you're planning on doing. And I have the file for this, um, the artwork file that we're going to use uh, in my design center on my website on the free design page. It's on the very top. And if they grab that, they'll be able to use it. And actually, I think and I'll bring this up a few times. There's all of the websites. So some things here, there's Cindy's website, my website, blog.brothersews.com, which has a ton of tutorials on there. Uh, a lot of free designs too, but there's Cindy's. So when you go there, you can go get that. Be sure that you go to the free design page. It's the first link at the top. I think it says Facebook Live. So it should take you and you just download that JPEG and we're going to use it in um, my design center. So Perfect. Without further right. ado, we'll flip over to that camera and I'll see you in a minute. Okay, see you in a minute. This is going to be very much fun. I have to tell you, she's using my design center. So I know some of you are going to ask, can I do this on my machine? Well, if your machine has my design center, probably yes. But let's take, let's see what's going on here. We'll answer all those questions for you later. But I know a lot of you have the dream machine, the Stellaire, all those have that in it. So let's take a look. All right, Cindy, what do you got for us? All right, so... Hold on a sec, I got a flip camera here. I got to sit and flip. One oh, sec. there's a beautiful machine. I just get to watch, this is fun. I like your pen organizer, or what is that? A, 
It's a little um, tool organizer. A little I spy going on over here. Yes, yeah, sorry. It just holds. It, it's got little rubber spots and it just holds things in it. So oh, that's cute. Yeah, it, it's my little tool organizer. All right, guys. So we whoops, pulled that out. We're going to start in my design center and we're going to touch it. And we're going to pull an image out of the pocket. So when I told you to um, save that JPEG off of my website, you're going to put your USB stick in the side and pull that image out of the image file. And we're going to touch line design. And we are going to say from USB. And it is called wrap smaller, I believe. And we'll touch set. Now, there's a little button down here. If we touch this button right here, we can choose what stitch we want it to start with. And I'm going to choose the double run and just touch OK. And we'll touch OK again. Voila, we have our design ready to go and we're going to touch that. So I measured my ruler and it was basically one inch by 8.25. So we need it about um, three quarters of an inch larger than what our actual ruler piece is, the snap bracelet part is. So we, that size, if I touch size, this should be the correct size. I'm in metric, so let's go change that. We'll touch settings, go to page nine, change our unit from metric to inches here for a minute and touch OK. Now, my size is 9.05 by 1.79, and that's actually pretty much what I need it to be. So we're good. We're going to touch OK. I want an outside and an inside piece, and I've got them both there, but I want, I want to save it separately. So I'm going to touch my selection tool down here at the bottom and touch my magic wand. And then I'm going to touch that inner piece and I'm going to cut it out. And we'll touch close. Actually, I'm going to undo that first. We're going to save this to the memory with everything in there. So we don't have to go back in and retrieve the image. Now I'm going to go back in and grab my magic wand, touch close and touch that first one on the inside. We're just going to cut that out. We'll touch next. And we are going to actually go back to metric because I know my settings in metric. I'm a size girl in inches, but I know my settings in metric. And I want this stitch to be longer just because this is a placement stitch telling me where to put stuff. It's not actually going to be my covering stitch. So I have my placement stitch ready. We're going to touch OK. And we're going to set it. So there's piece number one. Now, we need a top and we need a bottom. And so I'm going to go ahead and make this my top. And let's say we are going to do cutaway today. So I'm going to choose add and I'm going to choose a font and choose, let's just do the ABC here. We'll touch the C and I'm going to change that to medium because medium looks like a good size for this. And if it's too big afterwards, you can always resize it and type in whatever stabilizer type that you want to do. That's so simple. And touch set. And then we're going to edit that and we're going to rotate it 90 degrees and touch OK. So now let's align them to make sure they're aligned. So we're going to go into our selection menu and we're going to select all and touch OK. And then you have an alignment button here in your edit menu. If you do align center, align center, touch OK, and then you can group that guy. And that one's ready. So if you want, you could actually fill your hoop with this. So we could do like five across with the border feature. If you touch this button right here and you go to the side, you can then add. So I've got five right there and I'm going to spread them apart. To spread them apart, you touch this button right here and then let you spread them all the way apart. So you've got five of them set up, ready to go.
Now, if you don't have five cutaways, that's okay. You can ungroup the whole thing, and then you can just come in and edit the text. So let's say that's not cut. I don't want that to be cut away. I want that to be wash away. We'll put in my W, and then I'm going to backspace to get rid of the C. Oops, went too far. Now we can forward and go wash. And then you would want to align that one to make sure it's aligned. So go into your selection menu, touch that, touch that. Those two are selected. Edit your align button and you're going to align it both ways again. And then you can group it. So you can set and play with that. And I would actually save those to the machine's memory so that you've got it ready to go. I've actually already got one of these embroidered, so I'm not going to, I'll actually go ahead and save it. We'll put Wait, Cindy, that in you, memory. Before you set that, I have to just tell you, because uh, out of all the shows we've had on here with using my design center, these are two new things that people have not seen. So the grouping, or you're lining it together, that is the simplest thing ever. And I know that people are gonna be like, well, where, how did that just happen? So number one, that, and also spreading them apart. So could you just point those tools out one more time for those that are that are like, wait a minute, I don't ever recall seeing that. All right, hold on, let me just delete. We'll, we'll, we'll clear a few of these out. Let me go into my selection menu and I'll delete a few things out here. Because that was just so fast and easy to be able to do that instead of moving it around, which you can do that too. But I think this is a great tool and this has not been shown on the show before. Okay, so the selection menu is down here at the bottom. You, it's the one with the square, the circle, and the triangle. When you touch that, I've got only one, I've got these two items here, and that's the first thing I want to do. So I'm going to select all, that's the pink one. Touch OK. And then touch edit this is your alignment button you can align center and align middle and touch ok then group that once i've grouped it duplicates is it, it, the copy button is gone but this border feature here will duplicate exact so you touch that one we don't want to go up and down, which is the default. We want to go side to side. So you touch the second one and you touch the add to the right. I love that feature. And then you spread it out, which is this button down here. And then you can touch it and put it in the center of your hoop and touch OK. Now, what I did to edit these, I touched the ungroup button because it's got everything grouped right now. And then I touched the, the word that I wanted to edit. I touched my text button and I deleted out down to the first letter. It won't let me get rid of my first letter. Yes, I could have added and added text in again, but it's sometimes it's easier just to finish what you've done. So add the first letter back in. There is a backspace here. You can then delete the first letter and then go back to forward. And then set it. So now I want to group that again. I want to make sure it's aligned. I touch the selection menu, touch the word, touch the shape, touch OK. Edit, align, center, middle. Okay, and then group. And you can do that for all of them. So if you wanted to change a bunch of different, change them to different words, you could definitely do that. I will say if you've got like fusible cutaway, adhesive cutaway, I would do all of my cutaway colors at one time. That way you can just put one piece of fabric over it instead of having multiple colors that you have to do. But you can do it however you want okay that sounds good there's a few questions on here the, those two features that we just showed are those exclusive to the luminaire yes uh, the border feature is not the border is on the dream it's on the stellaire i was um, thinking it was on the stellaire i wasn't i didn't know if it was on the dream and well, it's, I don't on know. The <laughs> it's on the 10 needle i think 
I'm pretty sure it is, yes. So Sandy, I see you asking, you know, where is this feature? If you have my design center, go check your machine. It has a lot of these features. It doesn't mean it has all of them, but it has a lot of them. This is in the edit menu, basically on the embroidery side. Right, this part is, but the beginning was not. So the beginning yeah, the was my design center, center and now mind. you're into the editing, just so you guys yeah. understand. Oh, am I buffering? No, you're yeah. good. Okay, so you would save this to the machine's memory. That's ready to go. And you've got, you can come back in and edit it if you want to, to change out different names. You've got your basic shape. So now we're going to go to the home button. And we're going to go back into my design center. We are going to pull out of our memory pocket, our shape that we started with, this one, and touch OK. Now, I'm going to go back into my magic wand. And I am going to touch that center one and cut it out and touch close. We're going to touch next. It should still be that running stitch. We're going to change the stitch properties back up to three. Oops, not seven, three. It's going fast today on me. Touch OK. I'm going to put this one in the pocket so that I have it because I'm going to use it again. And touch set. All right. Now, these are telling me where to place this on my stabilizer. So I'm going to touch add, my design center, out of my pocket, the first shape that I did that had both of the lines because we now need the center line. Touch OK. And we want to get rid of the outside one. So I'm going to touch this button, touch my magic wand, and touch the outside one. Cut that out. Am I going too fast? Nope. I think everyone's following and I'm just, so I see a few questions rolling in. Don't worry, we'll get to those, but I don't want to interrupt her because this is so good. And don't forget, you could go back and watch it from the beginning. So don't worry, just watch and then go back and watch the replay. All right, keep rolling. Okay. We're touching next and I'm going to change that stitch length to three. Touch OK. And I'm going to save this one to the memory as well. So we'll save it to the machine's memory. So now I've got both of my pieces. And when I come back in, I can just pick those pieces up. So we have an outside placement stitch and an inside placement stitch. The inside one is telling me where to put my ruler. Okay. It's also going to be a stitch that stitches them together. But it's the main purpose of it for this part is to tell me where to place that ruler. Okay. Okay. So we're going to touch add. Back into my design center. And we are going to pull it out of the pocket. And we are going to pull the outside one back out of the pocket. So this is going to stitch the two pieces together once your ruler is in. Touch next. And touch set. Now we want our little inner piece so that the ruler doesn't shift. So we're going to add it back into the pocket. Oops. Back into my design center. Sorry. Out of the pocket, the small piece. And we, you can change the color of this if you want. So if you wanted to change the color, touch your paint bucket, touch the stitches. And I'm going to use a triple stitch for this one. We'll change our color because it's a little bit more decorative. The paint bucket will touch the whole thing and change its color. And now we can touch next. I want that length longer. just to give me a little bit less, less stitch time. And we're going to set that. The last thing I want to do is add a zigzag covering stitch around the outside edge. So we're going to touch add, my design center, out of our pocket, and we want the big one because we're going to the big shape this time. Touch OK. Pick your color. So let's say we want that green. Doesn't really matter. We want a zigzag stitch this time though. So touch OK, paint bucket, and touch the outside shape. And then touch next. 
Now this one, I wanted a wide zigzag. So I took it up to four. And I took my density up to 110%, which is the max. And then I touch set. Okay, so we have our shape. And if we select all, we can then edit and group it. And you could do the same thing. So you could have an entire hoop field of these with your border feature. But I would suggest four only on this one, just so that you have enough space between them. Oops, let me go back in here. Enough space in between them to be able to trim. Make sense? That's so easy. And I'm watching everyone say, this is such a great tutorial. What size hoop is she using? Well, it depends if you're only going to have one or four of them in there. <laughs> it's really what you want to um, do. Since it is basically, uh, let, let's look, it's like 9.75 inches, I believe. So let me go and change to interest here so we can see. 9.15 inches. You can do your nine and a half by nine. You have to have at least nine inches. Mm -hmm. So I did the 10 and 5 eighths by 10 and 5 eighths hoop. All right. Now, I already have one over at my cutting table. And we're just going to go with the one that I have. Ready to get going on. Okay. And I'll bring it up and we'll fast. I'll show you how to fast forward to a color here. So, I like your Oh, no. Water disaster. You know, uh -oh. I told you I picked that water up. Hold on. Sorry. Clean up, clean up an aisle four. <laughs> That's what you don't want to dump on your fabric mat. So while she's cleaning up, I saw a ton of your questions come in. So yes, you can rewatch this either on Brother Facebook page or Brother YouTube page. I've also added it to my blog. If you go to AngelaWolf.com, you'll be able to watch it there. And the, the design that she's using, her website's right below. I saw a few people roll in late. Um, so you can get that design right on her website. So. Cindy, how's it going there? It looks like All you got right, I'm back. Crisis averted. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so I have basically two and a half by about 10 inches. All right, we're going right. to go to the back, flip it upside down. Where is my tape? And we're going to lay this, my back piece of fabric, onto the back, and I'm going to tape it down if I can find the end of my tape here. Don't judge my fingers, girls. It's winter time, and I, my hands don't like winter. <laughs> we were just talking about this. My hair doesn't. I came out ready for the show. Your hands? My hair was out to here. It's like a little, uh, I need, <laughs> we need to have a little beach in here or something like that. Well, you did. You had a whole bottle of water. Now you just need some sand. I did. <laughs> oh, well. All um, right. So what I did to get this, the ruler out, is basically just trim around the outside edge of that. And your ruler pops right out. If you leave this in, it's just too thick for it to bend around your stabilizer. And you're going to put that inside. That's why we had that second line there. You want to make sure you have clearance on both sides. Make sense so far? And we're going to take this down to our stabilizer. And there we go. Now, I have my cutaway already ready. And you want to kind of line up your, your stitch lines with the stitch line that's there. And you're going to tape it down as well. You can get the tape off your fingers. Hey, Cindy, where'd you get those rulers? I mean, like in general. I um, did my favorite internet shopping experience. There you go. Internet shopping experience, AKA not a brother brand. But if you message her, she'll probably give you the link later on. And all you do is search for click um, snap bracelets. Snap bracelets. Got it? That's what you're searching for. 
And yeah. hey, Christine, uh, yes, it, the design is on her website. I don't want to cover up her what she's doing. So, um, but if you go on there, look under. I think it's Facebook Live at the top. It's under there. Okay, so I've got my I've got my fabric taped down. I got my ruler taped down. We should be good. All right. And we are going to pull up my single design that I was working on so that we can don't have to go through four of them. All right. Perfect. So while she goes back there, don't trip over any water or anything crazy like that. <laughs> All right, here she is. Now I have the same color bottom thread in my machine as as a, my covering thread. When I go back to embroidery out of my memory pocket, there's my design. That should be exactly where I left off, except for I need to fast forward to my colors. So I've done the first two colors. So if you don't know how to fast forward on your machine, the needle with the plus minus sign on it takes you through. So we're going to fast forward through two colors. And now we're ready to stitch. Okay. Now, very important that you pay attention with something besides your finger. I didn't, don't know where my stiletto is, <laughs> but I have a paintbrush that I use to clean out my machine that's sitting right next to me. So we're ready to go with that. <laughs> you, I'm going to slow my machine down. You do not want to do this at a thousand stitches a minute because it has a piece of metal in it. Okay. Now, mine is taped inside there. It's nowhere going to be near my um, stitching, but you do want to slow it down. The other thing I wanted to do is, let me show this real quick. I want you to raise your presser foot. And we're going to go up to about 0.12 because you want, when it gets to the left side, it's got to be able to clear that ruler. Otherwise, your foot kind of gets, it might get caught. So we don't want that to happen. So we're slowed down. We're going to stitch it and we're going to hold it on the left side. And I think I lost my thread. Yep, I did. Hey, Cindy, while you're, yes, you're re-threading, we always love seeing that because that would only happen when it's live. <laughs> Was the ruler curve face up or face down? Curved up. Curve up, Jeffrey. Curve up. Because it snaps the other direction. <clears throat> I'm also going to put a little something on my needle here so that it goes in a little. Since I'm using adhesive, I'm going to put a little slicky on my needle. I saw a few people asking again about where to get these things. So go back and rewatch this. But if you just do an internet search, you'll be able to find these snap bracelets. Okay? That's all you need. Yeah. is not liking me today what have i done wrong that's only because we're live it is truly it's like it's not liking my tape today so i'm going to take my tape off this little i agree shalaka says that the projects are so inspiring they are and someone just asked um so Let's see here. Someone said they were looking for more projects for the Luminaire. Well, a couple of things. By the way, we have Facebook Live shows here every Tuesday and Thursday on the Brother Sews page. And every Thursday um, are the Brother Educators coming in. Many of them are using the Luminaire. Cindy uses the Luminaire. I use it. Uh, Joanne uses it when we come on and show these tutorials. Now, that doesn't mean that you that's the only machine you can have because a lot of these things will work on the other machines. But uh, there are a ton of projects. And if you want to binge watch, go to Brother So's YouTube page and you can go back and watch weeks and weeks. We started this March of last year when COVID started and we did daily shows for a long time. <laughs> so you'll get a lot of ideas, including pajama pants, which uh, I always think of the month of February as pajama pants. We have definitely done a few Facebook lives in the past year. Yeah, we've, right. we've had quite a few on the list. Play nice with me this time. Fingers crossed. You are still not. Yes, you are. Okay, it's grabbed it now. Okay. Off and I'm do doing the no-no of using my fingers. Oh, 
Oh, Helen, that's a great question. Helen wants to know, are you using embroidery thread or just standard thread? I'm using embroidery thread. All right. Hi, Joanne. Great to see you. And my thread is not liking me today. Wouldn't you know it? It's the perfect color. But it does not like me today. You know, it's funny you're talking about thread for a second. Now, this I'm sure is not the case here, but I have to tell you, recently I was working on a project and someone asked if thread gets old. And I'm always like, well, it really depends. Well, I was using a thread that was brand new for the serger and it kept breaking. And finally, I was like, what in the world is going on? And I grabbed the spool and just pulled and the thread broke immediately. It was a bad spool. So there is such a thing. As there I'm, is definitely I, such a thing as a bad spool of thread, especially when you're using adhesive backing. My adhesive may be a little aggressive and my thread may not like me today. And it, it doesn't. Off the top of your head, do you remember what speed you slowered? Slowered. Slowered. That's a new word for the day. <laughs> slowered. Um, 350. I took it as low as it would go. 350? All right. Yep. Slow down, guys. I do actually know that slower is not a word, but um, it could be. We kind of make up our own words at this one. <laughs> there we go. I so agree, Karina. <laughs> I took down my my uh, foot a little bit. And I'll show you what, what I took it down to here in just a second, but that's still not lying me. The oh, machine is uh, so quiet. Oh, Christy loves the new word, slowered. <laughs> slowered down. <laughs> All right, well, so by the way, while she's this and playing, I'll just keep, uh, keep, I could tell you jokes or something, but actually I want to fill you in on something. Uh, Cindy and I are working on embroidery with Angela and Cindy, and there's going to be some very cool projects coming down the pike. Just mark your calendar for the month of February. It'll be the first one. It'll be very exciting. All right. So we are at the point to trim. I lost you. I'm looking at your uh, beautiful cutting table right now. Maybe. Yeah. Um, I'm looking at your cutting table. Oh, yeah. is that where you want me to be? <laughs> That's where I want you to be. Okay, I'm here. So are we all. <laughs> all right. So now we're going to take our tape off. And it's like in my adhesive bagging. I'm using adhesive wash away on this. I used adhesive tear away on the top. And I, I fused a, um, I did a fusible cutaway on the back of the top piece as well to give it more bulk so that the ruler would not poke through it but you don't want a ton of bulk on the back side because that's where it's got a curl make sense it you makes sense all right so you want to make sure you cut your tape to tear it get the tape gone and then you're going to take your either applique scissors. I personally like double curved embroidery scissors. They are my favorite when it comes to trimming things like this. And you're just going to trim right up against that stitch line. I love those scissors. These are the bomb when it comes to doing this because you can get right up against that edge. Reen says, great project. I agree. Patty says, watching you two can get expensive. <laughs> it depends. Okay. You can just watch. <laughs> These are not expensive to do. The luminaire, now on the other hand, the um, it all depends on what you want to do. <laughs> yeah. Well, this makes this just makes organizing your stabilizers really nice, especially if you do it in specific colors. <laughs> Now, that really looks great. We are going to flip it to the back and trim off the back, and then we'll put it back in and finish it off. 
I think everybody can probably figure out how to finish it off, but I do want you to watch and make sure that you are paying attention to that ruler as you stitch, okay? Because if you don't, you may have an issue. So those are curved embroidery scissors, correct? Yeah, double curved embroidery scissors. Double curved embroidery scissors. I didn't realize they were called double curved, but I love them. Well, they have different versions, yeah. but I like they get right to the edge. These are my favorites. And I have one at ev almost every machine. <laughs> as well Laura, as at my cutting table. Laura says, how are you storing stabilizers? I actually store mine in a few different places, but I have an old wine rack that I store all mine in. It, it's just kind of cute. But, um, and then I have a few different bins. Cindy, how do you store yours? I have a shoe rack that um, has different bin holder, bin spots. And I've actually got those labeled with my P-Touch embellisher. That's the different perfect. stabilizers. So while she, I'm just curious, all of you in here, leave a comment and tell us how you store your stabilizer considering it's organizing time. And I love, I love ideas, especially for those that have smaller spaces because they usually have the best ideas on how to organize and keep it where nice and neat and tidy. Yes, because they have to. All right, so our next stitch is actually the inside little run decorative stitch. So we're gonna go ahead and do that. Ooh, Arnell labels hers in drawers. That's a good idea. So I, I'm I'm just keeping my ruler so it doesn't get caught. Oh, Phyllis uses an over the door shoe rack. That's a good idea. Oh, a couple people use that. Mine's like a um, a little cubby hole for shoes. It came with the house, <laughs> and we oh. didn't use it in our in our uh, master closet. So. Nice. I, I, I moved it upstairs. I, I, I can use the wine rack because I don't really like wine, but the shoe thing is the problem. Although when COVID hit, I'm sure a few stores are probably going to go out of business with my lack of buying shoes because I'm just wearing tennis shoes every day. But uh, my shoe racks are definitely not available for stabilizer at this point. But ask me again in March, Cindy, they might be. <laughs> <laughs> Just so you know, when we all start traveling again, when I see you at an event, you're going to be like, whoa, you totally changed your outfit. Like I said to Wynn today, I walked out the door, new day, new leggings, same tennis shoes. <laughs> yeah, our wardrobe is definitely going to change once we start traveling again. It has been, I will say it has been kind of nice. <laughs> but reality will set back in, right? I will say, Cindy, I did dress for the occasion today. I made this on an episode of It's So Easy. It's um, a shrug and it's like a sweater. It's comfy, I tie it, I can wear it anywhere. So I, uh, I like it. keep these around the office. I can throw them on before a live show and you guys don't think I just got done working out. It's fabulous. I have real pants on today too. So we, we did a reality check, close to <laughs> I didn't say I had real pants on, I just put a jacket on. <laughs> The same leggings. <laughs> I, I, I do have real pants on today, so it's good to know. And the last step is your covering stitch. So if you want to put a, a ribbon on here to tie, let's say you have a wider stabilizer and you need to tie it. Yeah. You can actually cut your piece of ribbon and place it right along that edge on each side. And then you've got a ribbon to tie it with. I'm not going to do that with this one. We're just going to stitch it closed here. That's a good idea. Oh, Betty, the fabric that I use for this, it's just a sweater fabric. It's um like just a very loose weave sweater fabric. Um, and it's only a few pieces in the garment. But I did have to use clear elastic to stabilize the shoulders because it's a really loose weave sweater fabric. Those of you that knit or crochet, you could have done it that way too. All right, so I'm going to actually stop. I think you guys get the concept, right? You it's don't looking need to good. Like, do what? It's looking good. You don't have to stop on our occasion. We're enjoying it. 
Um, because the next step is basically you're, you're going to cut it out and then you're going to get cl as close as you can. And then you're going to take water and a paintbrush and just rub the edge. I did not want to soak these because it's got metal in it and I didn't want it to rust. So there is a little trick that you can just rub water along the edge with your paintbrush, which is why I had water on my table. <laughs> Cynthia, I'm going to... Cindy, I'm going to look up your website real quick. Lucy, I got you. Lucy says, could you please just show us on her website where it is while she's embroidering? So let me go. I, I got you covered. I got you covered. So let's see. So you'll notice on this side, Angela, while they're doing that, um, that your foot is nowhere near the metal. It's when you get to the opposite side that you really want to pay attention to pushing it down with your, um, your little pushing tool. Whatever tool you use, your finger, not as not advisable, but I do. I will have to say I do that a lot. All right, I'm going to bring your website up with you while you're doing that, okay? To show them right, where I'm, it is. I'm going to speed up a little bit since we're not right up against it. All right, so. Just so you guys can find it, Cynthia's Embroidery. Her website's right below. Look below. There's Blog at Brother Sews. There's my website. There's Cindy's website. So, um, Blog at Brother Sews has a ton of embroidery things on there. A ton of projects that you'll love. My website uh, is always just fun. <laughs> and also, you can watch the replays for these. And then you have Cindy's down there. And if you go to her website, look up here where it says Free Design. See my mouse here? Boom, Free Design. And then where do you go? Right the here. very first Mobilizer wrap yep. art from Brother Facebook 119 2021. I think you labeled it really good, Cindy. You can't miss it. <laughs> click on that, and there it is. And then just right mouse click and choose save image as. Okay, so right click. No, go oh. click on it, and then right click right there. Okay, so here's the photo, and then you're going to right click and then save image as. And it's going to save it. There you go. Do you want to save it as a JPEG? Yeah, it saves it as a JPEG. All right, you got it, guys? Perfect. You're welcome. We're about done. Uh, you're welcome, Lucy. I like your hat, by the way. <laughs> Super cute. That is a special hat. Isn't that cute? <laughs> a tomato pin cushion. Oh, Cindy does have amazing workbooks on her website. Oh, T Tana says she has them all. By the way, for those of you that don't know this, which you should know this by now, but if you don't, or you're new to the party, Cindy has a Facebook Live show every Tuesday at 4.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Is that right? Correct time? I'm sorry, what? Is your you live show at 4.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time every Tuesday? Yes, 3.30, at 4.30 Eastern, 3.30 Central. Yes, and it's called Software Shut-In, and it's fabulous, so you don't want to miss that. So we give you a lot of binge-watching opportunities. I kind of try to do software because everybody else does machines, and when I'm on here, I'm usually doing a machine instead of software, so that that way everybody gets a little taste of it today i think i'm going to talk about initial stitch and simply applique because those are two that i haven't really hit oops i missed a stitch so hey vivian uh, for pe11 you want to check out cindy's website she's got a book and then she also does a lot of classes as well okay guys now i'm going to show you another little button here if you can see it on my screen. My thread didn't pick up in a little, I'm getting a little stick, my sticky's getting a little bit, so I'm gonna back up a few stitches here. This button right here is your reinforcement stitch. It's a little circle. And if your thread breaks in the middle of something, if you touch that little reinforcement button, it will tie off where you're at, and then you can start back up. Oh, Betty, you're too cute. Thank you. And Shirley's got a scan and cut coming. Congratulations. Sweet. Enjoy. 
<laughs> Karen, how long before you can rewatch the video? Well, as soon as we're not live, which we're live right now, so you can't rewatch it then. But when we're not live, in about 15 minutes, you can rewatch it. And I actually, just so you guys know, I know a lot of you asked for this, so I'm going to bring this up and show you. This is new for 2021. I'm not going back in time, but I'll bring this up while she's stitching so you can see this. There you go. We're about done. If you go on here to, maybe we bring this up. There we go. If you go on here, this is to, uh, Fashion Sewing with Angela Wolf or AngelaWolf.com. If you scroll down, uh, this this is from last week, but here's the blog post. So if you just scroll down uh, this afternoon, the one from today will be on there that you can go back and, and rewatch. And you just go to the blogs, you can rewatch. It'll have the videos for you to replay, or if there's an online class, which was last Saturday, things like that. Uh, so that's where you'll go to find that. All these things are a little bit new for 2021. We're just trying to make it easier for you to find everything. And Okay. So it's there done. Is. <laughs> it is done. And then you'll take your scissors and you'll just cut it out. Get as close to it as you can. You can take it out, but guys, I will be honest, I probably will finish doing some more in mine. So I'm gonna leave it hooped, leave the stabilizer hooked. I'll just patch that spot up. It'll be weak, so I will not stitch in that again, but I can stitch in the area next to it. Cindy, this is really a great tutorial. It's an, something easy to do, and what a great way to get organized. All right, so I've got my little belt paintbrush here. Get as close to this as you can, because you don't want to have to get a lot of stabilizer off of here. Don't, but don't snip your stitches. <laughs> I'm reading the comments while you're doing this. The people are asking, are we still going to do this post-COVID? I don't even know what it's going to be like post-COVID, but yeah, we're still here. <laughs> we're not going anywhere. And we're just going to kind of take it. And you're at, I let it, I'll go all the way around it once, and then I'll come back again. And by the time I come back, if you do warm water, it really goes fast. My cold water, since it's been sitting here, may not go as quick. And it's just got that wash away is just going to melt away. Oh, Marie, that was sweet. Thank you. And voila. There we go. See how it's coming off? So when you're all finished, you're going to have to explain the JPEG because a lot of people are asking. They thought it was a PS file. It's a JPEG file. It is a JPEG. That's what I started the whole lesson with. Remember, so I brought it? in the image design from a USB. Mm -hmm. And that, I mean, it's the exact size that you need for these particular ones. I'll tell you how long these are in just a second. Um, they were 8.25 by one inch, by one inch. So if yours are bigger, if your clicker bracelet, slap bracelets happen to get bigger, then you would want to get, make yours a little bit larger. You want about three quarters of an inch around the outer edges. It's away from your actual size dimension of your bracelet. Everyone's loving the sponge idea for getting rid of that water soluble stabilizer. That is brilliant. A lot. There we go. And now let it dry, and you're good to go. This is awesome. If you don't want it to use wash away, you could use the tear. You could use the adhesive tear away. I like the wash away because it comes away cleaner. That's just my preference. But there's nothing saying you couldn't do tear away on both. So let me show you one last thing before I forget it. I'm gonna have to trip over a few lights here. Oi! You'll notice I have fusible on the back of my top piece of fabric. So the piece that I was embroidering the name on has a piece of fusible the same size as the fabric. And you just lay those down on top to embroider those as well. 
The back pieces don't, but they are stiffened a bit. And I'm that's so it, guys. Everyone, I'm reading, I get the pleasure of reading all the fabulous comments. Everybody's loving this tutorial. So you'll notice here, my, my wash away is a thicker roll here. So I've got it. And that, that's where the ribbon one comes into play. You can just kind of give it a little extra add on. So if you've got fat rolls, you can give it a little extra. It's just basically to tell you what you've got. So you know what you've got. That's fantastic. You can play on one. Now, the other tip that I'll tell you is keep your label on the inside of your tube. That is what I do, too. I agree with that 100%. That is like the biggest thing. Well, I didn't, obviously, with the heat away that I screwed up on. But <laughs> if you leave that inside and you accidentally lose your label or you're working on stuff and you get things all hectic around your studio, it's a last savior. Uh, Cindy, you know, yes. you're going to come back to us on the camera? I am. Okay, cool. okay, cool. When you do, I, I just have to tell you, I think one of the coolest things on this whole thing is the color coding. I can hear the echo. <laughs> oh, sorry. Let me turn you down a little bit. There you go. Better? <laughs> yeah, that's better. Arnell says, greatest idea ever. Arnell, I wore this for you, by the way, the purple. So um, I think... One of the coolest ideas, though, was to keep them color coded. So if it's all water soluble, keep them all under one. You could just quickly, through time, as you get used to whatever color coding you had, grab yep. it quickly. That way you know exactly what you've got. And like I said, if you want to go quick and easy, you can go with your scan and cut and just make labels for your scan and cut with your yeah. scan and cut. So. so speaking of doing labels with my scan and cut, I have been... This is a great idea. I think I might use this quickly because I still have some vinyl left over that could just use little pieces. Uh, very similar to what you just did. I love that. Um, I also have been using it to label my fabric with the scan and cut, just cutting out little cards. Yeah. This is just such a fun idea. So I'm, I'm making sure I didn't miss any of the questions. I was scrolling them to you as you were going. But for uh, some of you rolled in late, you'll be able to watch this from the beginning. The tutorial was fantastic. Everybody's just so excited. And everyone says this is the best organizing tip in 2021. <laughs> well, thank you. Um, <laughs> you know, that I just thought that was a, an easy, quick way to do something. And that's how I actually store mine, except for I didn't have the labels. <laughs> I do use these little snap bracelets to wrap it around it. So I love that. That's um, good. There was one other thing I wanted to say to tell them but that fish just went away have no clue as to what it was um i'm going to bring up your website one more time just to show them oh i do know what it was i was going to say you can make it out of various materials if you don't if you want raw edge you don't have to do a satin stitch you could just do a triple stitch around the outside edge as well um some cork, your cheap and expensive corks work pretty well with it. Your more expensive corks that have the thicker backings, not so well. Um, that's why I went with fabric instead of cork. Uh, but with cork, you could go raw edge. So it all depends on what you want to do. How much time do you want to spend with this? Yeah. And if you don't have an embroidery machine, by the way, I saw a few people here that said they have brother machines that aren't embroidery. Hey, you know what? <laughs> you could always just go in here and take the design, print off the JPEG, and sew it. You yes. Just be able to embroider it. Yeah. Well, I, you know there are um, there are sewing stitches that are are letters. I was so just thinking of that. Actually, do that. A lot of the sewing machines have letters where you can just piece them together. So you just have to get a little bit more creative. Yeah. Okay. So here's her website. Click on free designs up here, and oh, you got a lot of fun designs on here. Eh, there's a little, little bit of an assortment. Not a ton. There we go. There, and then right click. I'm using my mouse. Right click. Yes. <laughs> right, right click. click. Save image as. And yep. then you save it with all of your other things that you have in here. And I already have that saved. So now I just saved it twice. And you put it on your US, then transfer it to your USB stick. Yeah. So those of you that missed that at the beginning, that's how that happened. So. Cindy, this was an awesome tutorial. An awesome tutorial. I Thanks, love it. guys. Anybody have any more questions? Because I'm just checking. I see a few more things here. <laughs> Smart ladies. Thanks. Hey, thanks, Diane. 
Uh, Karen wants to know what kind of vinyl do you use? Uh, it depends on the project that I'm doing. I used uh, for this. This is the Brothercraft vinyl. Um, it's it's not permanent. It is the craft vinyl. So if I want to peel it away later and change my label, I can certainly pick it off and peel it. Uh, so it all depends on what I'm doing. The Brother vinyl is craft vinyl. I do use their heat transfer vinyl um, because it's absolutely wonderful. I agree. Uh, Judy wants to know, do you have videos on BES4? Oh, well, I can tell you one thing. She's got a big old fabulous book over here. <laughs> I have a book on BES4. There are also, if you go back to March, I've been doing Facebook Lives with BES, P Design. There's a random sampling of things all throughout that will scatter. It will give you a lot of information on that. Um, those Facebook Lives are all on my Facebook page. There are, there may be a few videos on my website, but uh, not a ton. They would be on my YouTube page or the Facebook page. Oh, Kim, thank you for the sweater. I showed the tutorial on It's So Easy. I'll post that video on my blog this week because um, I showed you how I just use a basic, I use the Evelyn dress and made it. So I'll make sure I post that this week. So keep an eye out. It's very easy. You can just do it yourself. Uh, a D DIY. <laughs> oh, okay. I'm reading just. Yes, Esther, you could take the design to the scan and cut. If you color coded it, um, that outside edge piece, if you change that color to applique material, you could do that. I didn't do that because of the ruler on the inside. I wanted to have wiggle room. Sounds good. Hey, do you remember what uh, you lowered your foot height to finally? Hold on. She's Lower. getting it, Michelle. Oh, uh, point one. Point one? Yep. Thank you. And Esther, she already grabbed that one. Oh, yes, I agree, Tana. Her books are amazing. And everyone's saying, thank you, thank you. Are the links to her page? Brenda, just go to, look right below. Look down, <laughs> down there. Oh there no, not at Cindy's, but look down even further. <laughs> Cynthia'sEmbroidery.com, blog.brothersos.com, and AngelaWolf.com. You can find all three of us there, which is fantastic. Oh, put Patty's comment up. This is a hoot. <laughs> this is like, this is kind of when I go, hey, Cindy, can I feel your sweater? <laughs> <laughs> Patty's comment up there. <laughs> she, she's part, she's got to be part of my tribe. She says, hello, my name is Patty and I'm a software junkie. <laughs> oh, I love that. Now to order the book. Her book is amazing. And by the way, mine's in the in my office. It's like this thick. <laughs> not on B, the BES one's not quite that big. And it's pretty the big. The design one is. The, the BES one's not quite as big. But uh, they, no way. I'll be right back. I'm going to let them judge. Well, I've got one right next to me. <laughs> so, you guys, thanks so much for joining us today. It was a, I enjoyed creating the project for you. It was fun. It gets me out of my world. It's, uh, there you go. See, the orange one is the BES book. It's not quite as large as the other. I was just comparing it to, so this is the, uh, we were just talking about this, the next, because I have got a very old version. I need to get my get my uh, mojo together and get with the program. But this is a great book, by the way, for those that had PE Design Next. And then this one. So if you call that a little book, it's You're i didn't say little i said it was smaller but it, it, don't don't let them think it's intimidating i'll put it up and show them there's a picture for no, every it's, not. <laughs> it's a picture book it's like oh let's see i think i'm super bright let me see yep. if i can bring it down a little bit there's a picture for all the steps that's what makes it so but it's so big hold on <laughs> this is a better camera so yeah don't be intimidated that wasn't where i was going with that so hold on a second because i just have to laugh Cindy, though because when i wrote my book there are no pictures and it's half the size and I swore I'd never write a book again. So is that a little bit better? Little yeah, bit. they can see that. So there's a, I mean, there's a picture for every step. It's not like I'm writing that there's, you're reading text for a gazillion times. And that book actually is a Facebook group. You know what I really like about it is because you have pictures on every single page. I'm a picture person. I got it. I need, I'm a visual person. So there's like a picture and a brief description. So you can just follow along. There's actually more pictures than writing. That's yes. my kind of my kind of book. 
But I just had to laugh because if you, th I was just saying it was very large because there's a lot of information <laughs> in there. <laughs> it's just not as big as the 10 book. So you, know, um, you have to have the, you do have to have the BES workbook in order to be part of the group. It is um, the same name as the book lettering. So easy uh, for BES four. So, um, but that's part of the purchase of the book. And I do a bi-monthly tutorial right now with them. It was, that group was originally supposed to be um, question and answer. There were no questions. <laughs> I decided, okay, well, we'll just start going through the book a little bit. So That's you can get the book from my website. It's directly on my site. Um, and if you watch me this afternoon, I will probably have a coupon code for it. Arnell said it was bigger than a phone book. Do they even have phone books anymore, Arnell? I don't know. I just <laughs> Not sure on that one. <laughs> oh, you're welcome. Well, this was a lot of fun. What a great tutorial. It gives me something fabulous to do this afternoon. And uh, thanks, Cindy. Thanks, Brother Sos. Thanks for, for having me again. Letting us take over your page. And we'll look forward to catching your show this afternoon, Cindy. All right. Sounds like a plan. Y'all have All a great right. one. Bye, everyone. Bye. Thank you.